The other day, I was having a conversation with a friend about how there aren't many AAA platformers that aren't made by Nintendo. We took a look at some modern games to decide what we really define a platformer in modern 3D gaming. If you want to hear what our final decision was, watch to the end, and don't forget to subscribe. At what point is this a platformer? <laughs> Like, it basically plays like a hybrid between an FPS and, or a shooter game and... It's like hard hockey. It's like a GTA... Would you consider Goat Simulator to be a platformer? <laughs> oh god, that's a tough question. It is a tough question. I don't know. This seems to be... It's a game with a lot of movement options. It's fast paced, which isn't necessarily a platformer, but it's what I like in platformers, in good platformers. Once you get good at this game, you never walk. If you're walking, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you just keep running. Because it seems like the game is almost... is almost blurring the line between some sort of on-rails platformer shooter. Because, like, at any point, you could just be stick-running to something, like a Sonic game. You know? Actually, I, th I think it does kind of feel like a Sonic game at parts. Here, let, let me put in some other gameplay that I have here. This is kind of platformery. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it might be why I enjoyed the shit out of this, is because the movement's so much fun. I don't I don't know if this is too brainless to, for you or not, but... Uh, no, I mean... I whether you'd enjoy this I, sort of I, thing. This is, this is pretty much a platformer. Uh, it's interesting. This game was an Xbox it seems to be, it seems to be a platformer. Yeah, like this is, I'm assuming. Are there any objectives? Or is this uh, yeah, kind yeah. of like you, a sandbox. You do, you do different missions. You, yeah, you do missions. Yeah. It, it seems uh, kind of like the the Need for Speed undercover game, version of a platformer. You know, or like the GTA Free Roam of a platformer. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, Saint Saint Row has. Yeah, kind of. Zombies, like, Saints right? Row 4 is kind of <laughs> like that. Yeah. Oh, the other cool thing about this is, kind of like Dead Rising, you, you get different weapon parts, and you build them into insanely ridiculous weapons, basically. Mm. Like I said, this game doesn't take itself too serious. I thought it was a blast. I played through the entire game of this. I think if, it, if you can get it for, like, five bucks, you should absolutely play it. It's... I mean, at the very <laughs> least, it's fun. Yeah. It'd be a good, you know, be a good few it's, hour run. It's wrong. pretty fucking mindless. But I, I played all the side quests. Like, I think I 100 percent <laughs> in this game. Pretty small game. 30 hours, maybe? That's not too bad. 20 to 30 hours? No, not, not too so bad. So would this be, would this be AAA? I think so. Because uh, the, the game company that does it, they're, they're AAA for sure. In, Insomniac. Insomniac? Yeah. Alright, so, so this is a... Uh, again, away. again, they, they 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 made Spyro. They dev the first Spyro. Yeah, this so is, def this is definitely AAA A platformer right here. I, I think a non Nintendo, non indie platform. That hardly anyone played, and it didn't sell very well, despite the fact that it got great reviews because no one wanted to play this sort of game, I guess. Also, um, do you consider, same company, Insomniac, do you consider the new Spider-Man game to be a platformer? Spider-Man PS4. Oh, God, I didn't see a ton of it. I mean, I, I can put on gameplay of that. It looked like there was definitely some platforming, like, you know, parts to it. Like, some areas of the game that were platformers. But uh, it was, as of it's, a year more, ago, it's more uh, of a beat-em-up style game. Insomniac would love to make Sunset Overdrive 2. As of a year ago. I honestly hope that they make a sequel to this game. They just don't let it die off as this obscure single title. Alright. What year is this game released? What? Uh, the, the last game? Yeah, Sunset Overdrive. Sunset? Uh, 2014. It, the other reason why it flopped is because it's an Xbox exclusive. Oh, and, and Microsoft on the Xbox didn't one. really advertise it well, hey and the Xbox One didn't sell as well as other systems. Yeah. So at what point is this a platformer game? I I feel like it's definitely you know a partial platformer. Like there are parts that are obviously platforming. You know this 
you know, is more. Or is this just an open action. world game with interesting movement options? You know what I mean? Which is what you can consider the last. Well, game. that's also, when you start to. Well, I mean, the last game, the last game, I would, I would say, is probably enough of a platformer where you could call it a platformer. Uh, this game, I think it's more a beat 'em up game that's with platforming, with, with platforming elements. Because like the the movement options and the objective is a lot of you know what sort of is innate about a platformer, and this game you know has the physics and the movement options, and you know with the with the way that you travel, well you know if you're running around buildings, which I'm assuming is a good point, a part of the game. Okay, so when we're like talking about would... platforming movement options, though, like what's the difference between this and Warframe? Warframe the fact is a that lot there are more platforms, of... I guess. Uh, yeah, Warframe was a lot more just running. The movement options are yeah. just to, you know, like you're getting from point A to point B. But I haven't played a ton of Warframe. But from what I was playing, I mean, there, there like wasn't really platform. anything standing in between you, just running so, from point A to point B. You know, and and not are. ever actually. So, however, not actually jump there are... in, you know? So this is so your level is called mastery rank, and whenever you level up, which is very rarely, you have to take a test to level up. Mm -hmm. Like you have to complete almost like a mini game test uh, that you can only get attempt once a day in order once to do day. your level up. Yeah, you can practice in Animal it Crossing sky style, like skip ahead and uh, by no, setting well, your computer <laughs> clock forward. No, because it's online, bitch. But no, uh, it's not that bad. So it's Animal Crossing. You can practice as many times as you want um, before you actually do an attempt. But yeah. some of those uh, are platforming, are like literally just straight up platforming uh, tests. Mm. Like, so I'm I mean, like, like you know, these these are... there might be platforming tests in the game, but the game itself isn't a platformer, just because you know th there are cool movement options in the game, but. There's never usually in the main game, aside from these tests, from what I from what I've ever seen, places where you you know have to use it. Okay, well, let's like, look at like some you, other. You, I wouldn't really goals. say that in this game you can just run through New York. You know, like like you, you're supposed to be jumping around. You know, like obviously, and you could just sort of so, like you can't just stand here and hack and slash punch. The entire time, yeah. you know, you have so to I'm jump assuming you around put this in the, the same buildings. category as Saints Row Four, almost where it's like Spider Man and Saints Row Four. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm assuming you put it in the same tier. As I, I would Row probably. 4. I feel it's like amazing. Spider Man's is probably a little bit game. more of a platformer than Saint Row is. So basically, the whole idea in this game is that you're in a simulation, so you hack it to give yourself superpowers. I wouldn't say, I mean, like, from, from what we're seeing here with this gameplay, it's mostly... It's mostly just... It's mostly a, run and shoot, GTA with where you can jump and sort of, like, teleport a little bit. You know? It doesn't really have the same kind of play yeah, let's go forward, as, play as the Spider-Man did. <laughs> I would say that this is not a platformer. What would you say? Completely honestly. I don't know. Honestly, like I don't know. I like I would think so. I would think that the primary genre is certainly not platformer. Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, there are definitely. Genres I feel action like it game? would. Yeah, I don't feel like we could say secondary genre of platformer. Secondary genre of physics game would be more <laughs> accurate to say. You know, because just jumping and flying around doesn't make it a platformer. As much of like a physics game. Yeah. Because it's not like he's flying, you know, in, like, in short bursts and then doing, you know, manual running yeah, around so I, and, like, jumping left and right. I guess know? the difference between this and Sunset Overdrive, and th there are some platforming segments that definitely exist in this game. There's some mini game. I guess the difference between this and Sunset Overdrive is that Sunset Overdrive, in its map design, maybe there's something about map design that, that has to be into a platformer where the map design has yeah. to actively encourage it, it, I mean cuz it's about jumping around you know manually and moving to different areas for for whatever reason is that what we're no. going to settle on is our definition is that there has to be something in the map design whereas this they just well, fucking took the city and told uh, you to have fun same thing with the Spider-Man game yeah cuz what it is is with Sunset Overdrive and 
I mean, with, with all of these things that we're currently debating on, it, it's the reason why it's not as concrete as, you know, something that we would obviously call a platformer, you know, like, like a Donkey Kong or, you know, a Mario Odyssey or Mario Galaxy. Oh, so this is giving Pla me a Platforming headache. is all about... It's that low FPS. <laughs> Anyhow, continue to go. Uh, the whole point of platforming, the way it can easily be decided if something is a platformer, you know, if, if you start in one spot and you go somewhere else, like, usually the goal of a platformer is to just get to a location. And yeah. Yeah. this game, I'm not really sure what the goal here is, but it seems like the goal isn't as much about the location. A platformer is going from, you know, the start to the finish and everything you have to do along the way. You know, in, in, in the Spider-Man, it seems like, you know, it was about beating people up with platformer, with platforming con With a platforming game, you know, like, with, it's, it's all about getting to the end of the level. And that's what right. makes a game obviously a platformer. With the last three games, with the Sunset Overdrive, the Spider-Man... True. And with Saints Row, it's not, n none of those are really about just sort of getting to a location. True. Sunset it, Overdrive, I, I don't really know what the objective of Sunset Overdrive is from what we saw. Kill, kill stuff most of the time. Yeah, but like, well, how do you win? Like, what are you actually trying to do? Like, when does on, the game end? objectives? Oh, yeah. it depends on the mission. So, certain so it's missions mission will be like, go go here, kill certain things, go here, do do objectives. Yeah, it's a mission base. Alright. Uh, that leaves it pretty vague. I, I feel like we can still say that it's more about the gameplay. Because uh, the objective sort of... It's just a general uh, objective way, to do if, things. If you can't tell, I enjoy these sort of games where I, I know <laughs> that are just complete fucking mayhem. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, they're, I they're really fun. enjoy these sort of games. It's almost but, a guilty pleasure because they're almost non games. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a, a simulation simulate simulator games are still games. I guess. Not unless if it's unless if it's walking simulator. Anyhow, I, I do like the idea that in order to be a platform game, the the map has to encourage it. it yes, it, it, it really like, does. And I like feel like the, with Spider-Man and Sunset elements. Overdrive, it really does. With Spider-Man, the map encourages it, kind of, but not as much as in Sunset Overdrive. Because in Sunset Overdrive, certain, it, you know, like there's tons of objects you can bounce off of, rails that you can grind. Like, it's all set up to be a playground for movement. And yeah, Spider Man is kind of the same way, but that's just because with, with Spider Man in general, it, it it does encourage the movement, but in the combat, which the main part of the game is the combat, right? Assume, you don't unless, have unless if the game combat. is secretly a puzzle game in every other sequence, then what is flashy and people uh, show yeah, on YouTube? No, I mean, but the though. combat encourages platforming. There seems to be uh, a lot of a lot Warframe of combat techniques. This movement during uh, during your combat, though. Because you like you have to continuously move during your Warframe combat. I mean, you don't have to, and, and not like, in ways that you would move if you were playing COD or, or you know. No, no, because you move around dodge bullets basically. So it wouldn't just be like you know backing behind cover. It's a lot like you know no. running up walls, you know shooting from different types of ground. If you could, if you could, because you can't play a platformer without platforming. If you're able to play through the whole game. Yeah, you, you don't know, have to jumping, do this, but here. So here's, then, here's an I feel like that's where you, where where you see platforming elements, right. just because platforming is Also, this isn't even that fun. experience. This is, yeah, this is, oh, I guess it is. I guess he's moving faster, a little bit faster than I. Is, is he in a level right here? No, this is the dojo. This is just an area that you can hang out oh, in. Oh, so where this is just showing off there. movement. Yeah. I feel like it has the movement where if somebody... Like they clearly have it Wanted set up to make a platform either either on purpose or just sort of by how it happened. If you're a person who likes platformers, you could have a lot of fun mm -hmm. with the movement here. However, if you came here from you know an FPS scene, you could easily look at somebody who says, "Oh yeah, I love the platforming in this game." Look at them and go, "What the hell are you talking about?" And, and I feel like that being you know the reality of it doesn't make the game a platformer. It it makes it a game with that definitely you have to admit, though, that's definitely has some insane movement. <laughs> yeah, it is a game that somebody could have a lot of fun, you know, from like a 
platforming standpoint, but the game itself, you know, is just a looter shooter with with insane movement. Either because it was designed that way or just because of how it happened. But at the same time, you know, there's not like platforms everywhere that they're jumping between and, you know, there's not like dive moves that make yeah, you, I mean, that give you the ability areas, to take advantage but... of having, you know, like there's advanced small platforming, platforming in your build. Areas. Yeah. I guess that's the difference to me is in environment. Mm hmm. I mean, yeah, it, it's your environment and your options. The environment has seem to, like, to more than half the time, like, more than half of the time, what you're doing has to be actively encouraging parkour. Yeah. And, and, if, and you can look if, at something... if you're just holding forward, if you're able to just hold forward and still win, then you couldn't really say it's a platformer. So I guess we compare this to something like Mirror's Edge, which still has shooting in it, right? There's still some yeah. shooting in Mirror's Edge. It's yeah. not I mean, I mean action focus. platformers clearly, still exist, and the action it's platformers clearly are really fun. not the main purpose, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you're super weak in that game, but shooting exists, <laughs> right? But in Mirror's Edge, the point is to get to A to B most of the time. Yeah. Right? Like, like the a most important platform. goal of a platformer. Right? The, the, the point is to get to A to B, and the map entirely actively encourages platforming. Right? Yeah. That is the entire point of it. Yeah, because the point of the platformer is go, and you can have objectives in between. I mean, they have like RPGs that are like platforming RPG. I mean, isn't Dead Cells is like an ARPG platformer? Would would probably in to fully encompass the game, from what I've seen. Yeah, I just yeah. Because like they, they mean they've had RPG, uh, not RPGs. They've had platformers with combat, you know, always. Usually, that's more of a like melee combat, like a Ninja Gaiden style thing. Sure. Uh, you know, because sure. like I mean the the old, I mean Contra. Is you know is a shooter. It's not much of a platformer, but you could make an argument there. You can hold forward and win, though, at the same time, but it is, the goal of the game is to get from point A to point B, uh, through yeah. any means necessary. You know, dodge the enemies, kill the enemies, just get through. So you can honestly say that Contra is an, an action RPG. You do have a gun. It's got some pretty piss-poor yeah. platforming in it, but... And I guess, honestly... Almost by what, definition. What, what... When we're talking about 2D games, like even Contra or anything like that, when we're talking about the modern 2D platformers, I guess the reason why there's so little AAA games is because, again, the games are so cheap to develop that, like, there's there's so much competition. Why would someone spend $60 on a AAA 2D platformer when you could spend $20 on an equivalent AAA 3D, 2D platformer? Do you know what because I mean? Because of, yeah, just... I feel like, like, like outside it's just of sort of the way it's gone is that indie developers and indie companies have been doing so much with platforming that uh, opposed from Nintendo who, you know, still make amazing platforming games of all kinds with their biggest IP, you know, Mario, Donkey Kong, Kirby, and even more Yoshi stuff. They've just sort of, you know, I mean, Microsoft has a lot of indie companies that they work with. But they don't make any platformers themselves anymore. Right. right. I, I don't know. It's just it's really interesting to me that um that this is the state of things. Yeah. And uh, honestly, I think people kinda got burnt out on platformers as a whole. Sure. And, and I maybe, feel like that's maybe that's what... why they stopped making them and then you know, it just right, sort of like, became like the every new single... norm to not make them. Well, but it was the new norm to make them, right? Like every single yeah. I mean, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. But yeah. every single, like, mascot was was in a platform. Was a platform. Game. Mario, Sonic, Rayman, Crash, Spyro, all platforms. Yeah, I mean, all of, Banjo you know, the, the big gaming boom really happened on the backs of platformers. Because platforming right, like was... Super Mario Bros. Yeah, right? I mean, it was, it was simple for all ages accessible and fun you know sim simple to make anyone I can mean, play it I, and it I was, guess it's possible it that something formula. comes back right like 
people consider certain genres to be dead, and then all it takes is for one game to come around and prove people really wrong on it, and everything flips in the other direction. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, that might have been instance, what happened with platforming. Like for instance, battle royales have been around for a while, but were kind of dead-ish, and then all of a sudden, PUBG and Fortnite hit the scene, right? Mm-hmm. Now uh, every P- PUBG now first. every turn-based strategy game has a battle royale like, mode. Yes, yeah, Civilization has a battle royale. Forza has a battle royale in it. I still don't know how Forza's battle royale works. Apparently, but... Tom said that it's really good because Forza already has an open world map, so like you hit people with cars and then you just sort of have a get... car health bar. I think so. All right, I I, th- I think that's, but I think that's about where we should end the the podcast on it, right? I think yeah. That's, uh, about the end before i start spewing forza <laughs> before we start talking about racing all right i, I yeah I, I feel like that's i feel like we're good right like over oversaturation plus not yeah, doing anything ca- caused it to enough. sort of be taken off the you know the forefront of the big triple a developers but then a lot of a lot of people mm-hmm. who still love it because you know it's still such a great genre of games to make that a lot of indie developers just say like, "Hey, you know, in the we can make sector. our own." Then they sort of revitalize. I'm sure well, you know, platforming wasn't ever gone for very long, but, but even it just sort of not being at the front yeah. made people yeah. realize how important it was, and just ushered in you know so many indie developers making their right. own. You know, with, with Shovel Knight or Ori in the Blind Forest. You know, Trine but Inside, now, Fez, Dead Cells, Celeste, have... Guacamelee. Now what we have is possibility of that happening again with 3D platformers. Like, the fact that, that Ukulele made so much money off of its Kickstarter, right? Mm-hmm. The, the the fact that um, I Had In Time did really well, as well as Super Mario Odyssey, shows that there's interest there. Yeah. Because you know, 3D platforming, you know, aside from what you had said earlier about Mirror's Edge... 3D platforming has mostly just sort of been Maybe left to another Mario. 3D, another 3D platforming game that's definitively a platforming game, and I, I'd say that I'd say that Mirror's Edge is definitively a platforming game. Not so much with yeah. some other examples like Sunset Overcooked, but not not Overcooked. Fuck Sunset Overdrive. Sunset Overdrive. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just making a 3D platformer is, you know, significantly. But- more I don't work. know if it, I don't know if it's that much harder because there was a lot of shitty 3D platformers that were churned out in the PS1 Ma- making era. an open world ish platformer, you know, like even open world in the terms of the Mario Galaxy or like Mario or... Sunshine, where you just have even if it's like a small world, but but there were like bad the 3D platformers back in the world. day. Back when it was oversaturated, sure. they were bad 3D platformers, right? Like you. Yeah, I guess like Bubsy for, for, 3D. Yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, that's what I was gonna say. For every. I mean, like, Bubsy you know, 3D better. still had like a Bubsy. powerful studio behind them, didn't they? Um. Fuck, I don't know. I, I don't care. I want to end it here before Bubsy. we start talking about Bubsy. I'm gonna end it here. <laughs> I mean, Bubsy is a classic platformer. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, designer. It doesn't even have. A, it doesn't even list a developer. Oh, it's because I'm looking at the character. Whatever. Everyone knows Bubsy, and if you don't, then you're better for it. Yeah, I was gonna say. If you don't, then that's a good thing. Alright, are we gonna end here? Alright, yep.